Hello there, and welcome back to All The Mods 9. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Obviously, we are starting off in the Nether, and we are looking for those beehives in Nether Quartz. So, I just, uh... I, 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 it was around here somewhere. There was some Nether Quartz. There it is. I shift-clicked it, and you can see the BDAR, or B-Radar, or whatever we're calling it, is lighting up in this direction. And it says I'm 52 blocks away. So we know there's a beehive somewhere in this general direction. Got my jetpack. Whoops, I flew right by. It is 20 blocks this way now. Aha, it is somewhere directly underneath me. Four blocks. Ah, it's part of this vein, apparently. We we'll have to be very careful. I don't accidentally break the beehive. Although, no, I can break the beehive. That's not going to matter so much. Right? Oop, I just... There it is. Ah, okay. So there's the quartz nest. We just need the bee to go back into it. And then we can pick it up and... Get started. Oh, you know, I could just, uh, oh, well, it's collecting that quartz. So we'll wait for it to go in and then pick it up. And then that's the first step in our line for iron bees. Next, we need to get some ashy bees, which we can get from uh, gravel or sand nests with a honey treat, which I have in one of my bags here since I have so many. Okay, where'd the bee go? He, he's he's gone off somewhere we might need to use the honey no it wasn't a honey tree i think it was quartz for the uh, crystal bee yeah it was quartz so uh since that crystal bee has buzzed off let's do this ah so every quartz speeds up how quick till the bee arrives. Okay. And diminishing returns. So then let's just block up in here so that the bee cannot get away once it returns and then we will head back home. <laughs> All right, we got another bee. Uh, while we're here, we should probably see if there are other nether bees that we can catch. I'm fairly certain I saw... Okay, there's a nether brick nest. Uh, looks like that's the only other one that I can find right now, so... Eighty something blocks in this direction. Looks like it's in here, but down. Maybe not. Found it. Okay, so we've got our nether brick nest also. And we can use a mag magma cream on it to produce another bee. And we're going to go out in another and test if we can do that in the overworld. And I think that's it. So let's head home. 64 diamonds plus 32 phantom membrane gives you eternal vigilance, sharpness 10, life mending 5, looting 5, unbreaking 5, Scavenger 5. I would buy that if I had Phantom Membrane. As it is, I think I have three since I almost never have Phantoms. And as you can see, I went out looking for a sand nest and I found one just over by our Stargate. So we now have our sand nest with an Ashy Bee. 
We have a quartz nest with, well, nothing in it at the moment. And we have our crystal bee. So once this bee decides that it wants to come out, uh, they're both, they, uh, yeah, they, the uh, quartz bee or crystalline bee does like flowers. So we can keep them over here with a flower. And once the ashy bee comes out, we can breed them and get ourselves a iron baby. Yeah, baby, B -E -E. B-A-B-E-E. -E. That's what they're called. It's a little hard to see, but yeah, baby. -E. <laughs> this is why you don't work with animals. They never behave. Anyway, once we get that done, we'll have our, we'll get started on our iron bees. We've got our wood bees in there. Then I think we're going to head over to SGC and start designing our second floor of the base. And that's going to be where we have all of the different beehives set up and all of our bee uh, products, because if not products, um, facilities. If we look at this, we have centrifuges, bottlers, catchers, honey generators. And these will allow us to automate different aspects of how it works. So the bee bottler will. Hello. Got it. There we go. Now we got our. Huh. I got a resistance buff from something. But now we have. Our iron bee, or at least the first one, we're going to need more. But yeah, so now we have our first iron bee. Um, as I was saying, for getting not interrupted, uh, distracted. Yeah. But we can start making these centrifuges, catchers, whatnot, which will allow us to automate some of the process. And so I want to make that its own dedicated location in our base. I might just have to catch this one, but I'll wait till uh, their cooldown is up, breed them again, and then go about getting our next be next beehive set up. I have no idea where that baby nomad came from. Certainly wasn't from one of these two. Um. Okay then. And we're just going to pick those up. And we now have a bee pack. Instead of a backpack. I'm just sticking all the bee stuff in there. Ooh, that looks very cold and mechanical. And for some reason, I'm having flashbacks of playing Doom and Wolfenstein right now. Yep. Uh, this is going to need adjustment. But. So we're adding our first subfloor. So there's going to be a two-story floor here. Uh, we're going to put another floor like this. And then up here is going to be the actual second floor. This one here is just going to be for moving pipes and power and anything else I might need to move between floors will be done on this floor. That is two, right? Yes, that's two. And yeah, so the bees are going to go on that floor, which is going to be floor two. This is. Not a floor. But this whole area here will probably be mechanism because I'm going to need a lot of space to do some of the more intensive mechanism processes. The uh, making uh, the chemicals you need for. I forget what it is. Let's make like this fissile fuel, right? We need isometric centrifuges, which needs uranium hexafluoride, which needs hydrofluoric acid and uranium oxide. And it just the rabbit hole goes deeper. And each of these steps along the way use different mechanism parts to feed into it. 
So that's what's going to be in this area here. And I'm probably going to have. You know, it's probably going to be underground. So a subfloor to this. And that's where our reactor is going to be and our turbine. Yeah, that sounds that's probably going to be the best way to do this. Well, I'm just under SGC here. I've been, well, cleaning out all the Greg Tech carbon here, uh, coal, and uh, it left a lot of holes. So I was just, you know, cleaning everything out. So it actually looks nice and we'll have hidden spawn areas. And as I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm I'm mashing my right mouse button right now. My brand new mouse, well, brand new, five months old. Right mouse button stopped working. My last mouse I had lasted me seven years and the mouse before that lasted me about 10 years. And this one lasted me five months. Uh, I'm not happy. Thankfully, I do have, uh, it is programmable. So I have another button queued right now to the right mouse button. So I can still work. But now I've got to play like I was using a left handed mouse as opposed to a right handed mouse because, you know, I got to use my. Yeah, I got to use my hand backwards, essentially, in order for my mouse to work now. <sighs> well, once this is done, I'll have more sand and more gravel so I can continue working on the floor up here. Well, I mean, technically it's the roof, but you get the idea. And, uh. In my previous clip, I had said this was two blocks high. No, that's two blocks high. That's three. Well, this in between is going to be two blocks high. And then we're going to start putting the putting the bees on top of this level here. Well, I joked about it, so why not actually do it? We now have a bee pack. And uh, I upgraded all the way to the diamond level. So now we can hold all of our bee items in here, no issues. I did also upgrade my main backpack to diamond. Also, these other three are, well, iron and gold. That's that's fine. So I'm going to need to create some more advanced beehives and yeah, we're going to need to create some more beehives to make advanced beehives. And then I did want the expansion hive. Well, that's going to be a little expensive on the honey side and this is this is not easy right now <laughs> I am I, I've got my mouse all wonky with its key bindings just so I can still record um I think yeah, let's make three of those for now and we're going to want. I made the wrong thing a moment ago. Oh, well, I'm going to need three of these anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. All right. And then we're going to want some beehives. Two. Uh, three. Then we need to make advanced hives. And I don't have enough honeycombs for that on me, but our oh my backpack's still on our bees in here have been producing honeycomb so yeah we're good there oh wait i got all the beehives i need now i need this plus need three of these There we go. Okay. Now we have three new advanced hives. We have three honeycombs. I want to grab an iron block. You need the block of iron for the iron bees to pollinate from. And I don't know what other bees to start making next. Um, you know, what about diamond bees? That can't hurt. Uh, obsidian B, refined obsidian B, diamond comb, diamond B. Here we go. And that requires an ender B and a lapis B. 
uh, we should bookmark the diamond bee. All right, and to get a lapis bee, we need a blue banded bee and a redstone bee. And blue banded, we get, we can get from dark oak, cherry, and acacia nests. All right, so bookmark that guy. And redstone, the escape artist, we get with a glowing bee and a chocolate bee. Oh, okay, this is gonna be another rabbit hole. Uh, glowstone. B comes from glowstone blocks. So we're going to go back to the nether for that one. And the chocolate bee can come from sand, gravel, or dirt. Okay, but I guess what we're going to have to do is take our sand nest and just start giving it honey treats. And maybe one of the times we do, it will produce a chocolate bee. So we're going to have to see about that. And let's see, the other thing I wanted was an ender bee, which is going to require going to the end. I haven't done that yet. That's going to require a dragon fight. And that is not happening when only one of my mouse buttons work. <laughs> but we can get started with maybe looking at getting... Well, we can go grab the glowstone bee from the nether. And we can get started on trying to get the chocolate bee. Oh, and I'm going to want glass. I don't have much glass. Okay, how about sand? Don't have much sand either. Okay. And then we should probably tear down this here. Can I take these out? I cannot take them out. I need them to go. I need them to leave the nest and pick. Can I pick them up in the nest? Yes, I can. Okay, never mind then. So I can now tear this down and we can head to back to SGC and start building a proper B um, facility. Well, I'm going to have to tear this down a little bit because I had an idea. We're going to put these and we're going to use yellow for the B section, you know, because yellow and honey. Whereas downstairs we have, well, blue in our walk in and red in our mechanism. So I'm going to put yellow up here. I'm going to put some lights in. The lights will be replaced in the future with yellow lights since right now I only have white lights. That way this area will be lit the same way it is downstairs. But yeah, this is the first section of what will be our B uh, nest area. And so we have our block of iron right in front of our beehive. And this is important because when we eventually upgrade to the, um, uh, where is it? There are upgrades here. And one of them is the simulation. Yes, this thing. When this is set up, it goes in front of the hive, just as this block is here. And when you do that, the bees will never actually leave the nest. It will just simulate them leaving the nest produces a uh, strain. It's good if you have it, if you're playing on a server, you won't have all the extra entities, but we might do that here in the base just so it's, um, well, less laggy and less noisy and all those fun little things until then. Yeah, I'm just going to replace these. Uh, where is that? I need to figure out which block is which. Uh, okay. That one's the light. And then it's every four I put the light again, correct? That's one, two, three, four, five. There's five between. Okay, so four, five, and then we can place another light. Yep, that one. Okay, I think that looks good. Or at least it looks acceptable for now. You did not want to watch me build this because I placed so many glass blocks in the wrong location and without silk touch. I broke every single one of them. Where'd I put them all? 
Yeah. <laughs> it was a painful build. But there we go. So now we have this set up in such a way that we can place our bees. They will not get out. They can pollinate. Well, I'll fill that in, in a moment. I got good. I gotta go get a redstone block and um, yeah, we can actually get started on. Well, I'm clearly missing a piece of glass here, but that is weird how that happens. Huh? OK, as I was saying, yep, now we're ready. We can start putting our bees in here, start working on them and uh, I'm going to build another area just over there for specifically breeding the different types of bees. And uh, I got to remember where I put my glass bottles. There we go. I just hope they don't exit. No, I, I, uh, there's no room for them to exit. Okay. What I can do in the future. And this is part of the reason why we have the two floors is if I come over here, we can take out this block, which gives us access to the expansion hive. And then we can connect the refined storage, right? We can connect the external storage to it. And that way, anything that's in the hive will count as being part of our network. Same thing we do with the barrels right now back at our colony. When we get into AE, there should be an import and export bus. All the facades. Might be the ME interface. I don't remember. I could have sworn there was a, a uh, import and export bus. But I'm not seeing it, but there's a lot of stuff here and that would allow us to pull uh, pull anything from the internal storage of here. So this is the iron bee. So any iron combs, any honey and any other products could be pulled out. And we'd also be able to put in new glass bottles whenever it drops below a certain threshold so we can essentially automate it. So that's part of the reason we have this underfloor. Because then we can run cables and it won't be in the way. And it won't mess up what it looks like from under here. Uh, hopefully they're not having a hard time finding that. That is glass, yes. Nope, they're not having an they're not having an issue. You're not all in that one spot. No. Okay. Two of them went back in. Yep. Okay. He has no problem collecting from the, from the wood. And then he goes back into the nest. Good. That works. Awesome. But I think we'll call it here just because yeah, I, I can't do this anymore. I'm trying to play with my mouse the way it is. It, it's, it's not working. So <sighs> next episode, I will hopefully have a new mouse and this won't be an issue. Of course I, said that five months ago and I've got a new mouse and new issues. Anyway, until then, thank you for joining me today. I hope you've had a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Later.